everyone knows I'm a big fan of Cold War light tanks, especially if they're autoloaded. With that in mind, it's a bit surprising that I haven't talked about the M8 AGS until now. With rumors that the M8 will be appearing in War Thunder very soon, it seemed like a good time to do so. The M8 story starts in the early 1980s. At that point, the US Army was looking for a replacement for the less than stellar M551 Sheridan, and had been experimenting with a novel weapon system. This was the rapid firing Ares 75mm gun, which used case telescope ammunition. Though the gun system worked well, and was successfully installed on a wide variety of vehicles, it was deemed too expensive and anemic. With this in mind, the Army began looking at the possibility of arming light tanks with a 105mm gun. The 105's fire rate would be much lower, but it wouldn't be nearly as expensive or time-consuming. Most importantly, the 105 would be more than capable of taking out pure armor threats. In order to test this concept, experiments were conducted in which a standard M68 cannon was installed on a Sheridan, both with and without a muzzle brake. While it wouldn't have been a good idea to press this modified M551 into service, it did prove that the 105 could be mounted in a light vehicle. The effort to replace the Sheridan was rolled into a new program, the Armored Gun System or AGS. Requirements for the AGS were fairly simple. 1. It had to have a 105mm gun. 2. It had to have airdrop capability from a C-130. Defense companies proposed a variety of vehicles, but these were eventually narrowed down to four. These were Teldyne Continental's ASP, Cadillac Gage's Stingray, General Motors' LAV-105, and finally, FMC Corporation's CCVL. In the meantime, the US Army was re-evaluating the program and its requirements. Despite outcry from airborne units, the airdrop requirement was changed from essential to optional. In 1991, Funding for the AGS program was reduced, and Congress advised the Army to select the LAV-105. The Army refused. Finally, in late 1991, four bids were received for the AGS contract. These came from FMC Corporation, Haglands USA, Cadillac Gage, and a joint venture by GDLS and Teldon Continental Motors. All of the bids were upgraded vehicles that these companies had previously submitted, and all were armed with the XM-35 low recoil gun. It's important to note that low recoil does not equal low pressure. Some people have been confused by that. It still fires 105 ammo at the same velocity, but thanks to the muzzle brake and beefier recoil mechanisms, the gun's recoil is reduced. In June of 1992, FMC was awarded the AGS contract, with their vehicle receiving the designation of XM-8. The XM-8 was a fairly impressive vehicle. It had a crew of three, commander, driver, and gunner. The gun was fed by a 21-round autoloader, which was a scaled-down version of a naval gun system, also made by FMC. The rounds were arranged in a crescent-shaped magazine, with a loading arm at the end of the magazine bringing the round up and into the breech. The fire control system automatically indexed each round in the autoloader. Nine additional rounds were stowed in the hull. All of the ammunition was protected by blow panels, with a bulkhead separating the gunner and commander from the gun. If necessary, the gunner could manually service the gun via a cutout in the bulkhead. The gun was fully stabilized, and the gunner also had a thermal sight. The original CCVL had a thermal sight for the commander as well, but this was eliminated. A laser rangefinder was also provided. Strangely enough, the coaxial machine gun was located on the side of the turret, next to the thermal sight, instead of being located directly next to the gun. It was probably designed this way so that the gunner could more easily reload it. The commander could have a 50 cal 7.62mm machine gun, or 40mm automatic grenade launcher attached to his cupola. The turret had a total of 16 smoke launchers, with 16 more grenades being carried inside for reloading. The XM8's turbocharged engine, which developed 550 horsepower, was made by Detroit Diesel. The transmission, the General Electric HMPT 503 EC, was also used by the N2 and M3 Bradley. On road, the XM8 maxed out at 45 miles per hour, or 72 kilometers per hour. The hull was all welded aluminum. In order to meet requirements for transportation and protection, the XM8 had different armor packages that could be installed. Level 1, which primarily consisted of applique steel plates, offered side protection against rifles, overhead protection against artillery fragments, and frontal protection against heavy machine gun fire. For level 2, this was increased to side protection against HMGs, and frontal protection against autocannons. Level 3 could protect the vehicle from shoulder-fired anti-tank munitions. The XM8 would have been airdropped without these packages, and would have them installed after linking up with friendly forces in the field. It could, however, be airdropped with level 1 armor, though it would severely limit the amount of ammo and fuel it could carry. With level 1 armor installed, the XM8 had a power-to-weight ratio of about 30 horsepower per ton, in October of 1995, it was finally classified as the MA AGS. Unfortunately, things go downhill from here. Not long after, Congress cut all funding for the M8. Ideas to bring it back were kicked around, but nothing happened as a result. Over the years, the M8 continued to evolve, to the point that it could still see service today. The M8, or at the very least one of its ancestors, is in the running for the Army's MPF light tank program. Anyway, that wraps up the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.